And Sports presents BTA King of Bowling, featuring the area's top bowlers competing for cash prizes. Brought to you by Burger Beer. Burger, it's your taste. Trust it. And now, here's your host, Jack Moran. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to BPA King of Bowling for 1979. And today, well, all you have to do is look outside and you know where we are today. You're right, Brentwood Bowl. And the reason I say that, because this is the 18th year we've been coming your way with BPA King of Bowling. And I do not believe that in the 18 years we've ever come to this establishment that it hasn't been a blizzard or a monsoon. You've heard of the Montezuma curse or the Montezuma's revenge? Well, this is Bob Levy's revenge to us. I don't know why it is. But anywho, we're here for our inaugural program. And as you know from years gone by, this the first two weeks we have the gals with us. Then after that, they're on their own. Our first qualifying round was held right here at Brentwood. And whom do you think emerged victorious? Number one for the gals, who was our runner-up in BPA King and Queen just oh about five weeks ago, four weeks ago. Here she is with a 672. Let's hear it for Pat Peterson, ladies and gentlemen. And the young lady to my immediate left was number two for the gals with a 628. Let's hear it for Vi McKinney. Vi, good to see you back again. Now, over here to my right, we have a couple of new faces on King of Bowling. The gentleman to my extreme right, who will be bowling in the very first game against Vi, is Bob Lab with a 707. <laughs> and to my immediate right was our number one qualifier. Now, I thought I always had the shortest approach in bowling. But where do you see this fellow perform today? He is only, I would say, about three steps from this foul line but his ball is in that pocket every time. He must know something because he shot a 713, our number one qualifier, Robin Skinner, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there we have it. Our first match, we told you, be Vi against Bob, and the balls will start rolling right after this word about the beer that has brought you bowling for many years and will continue to do so in years to come. You know what I'm talking about. That zingier better than ever. Better! Right. The study of smaller brand beers in America is a shattering experience. While some have been knocked off, others have split. And a few small beers have been spared for the moment. Now, experts tell us the small brand won't survive. Big conglomerate breweries will pick it up. But Berger says bunk. When it comes to taste, Berger stands up to the biggies. So pour me another fresh Berger. Okay, Slammer, here we go. Match one for the 1979 season. BPA King of Bowling, lanes 41-42, Brentwood, Vi McKinney leading off. And the first one's en route. And almost in the back door, but not quite. Vi, who was 29 and won the city match game championship. She, incidentally, Sam, she goes to the U.S. Open this year. It's true, very true for that championship Utapol team and Alice Gilkey is down there cheering Vi on. It's Vi against Bob Ladd in match one. And here we go. This fellow making his first appearance ever on King of Bull and he's no little boy either. Six foot four I think Jack. Is that all? <laughs> I hope he bowls his weight. He'll be tough. Bob Lab. Nice delivery there. Comes over on the other side, says, I'll take him over there. What a start. Yeah, he just rolled 299 in the Hamilton area last last week, Jack. He's an employee of Linden Lanes. 
And he's got the credentials averaging in the league competition of 197 and 202. He's won, he has several 700 series to his credit. So his first delivery ever on King of Bowling was a strike, and he's going to try to make it two. And he almost did it, the old seven pin. Still rolling, but the rack's going to get it. That was a good ball, just didn't carry the seven. Got a nice delivery. Got a good roll on the ball. Rolled to fingertip. Well, the gals got the experience today as far as exposure on television is concerned. Look out, look out, so. That's known as the lane being about three inches too long. Yeah, Sam. it was too long. Yeah, Vi and Pat Peterson both have been on television before, but Bob and Robin are making their first appearance. Vi uh, having a little road trouble right at the start here. Yeah, it's a little fast with that ball, kind of sliding. In fact, that's the second time she's had that same pin. The old deuce. Vi doesn't waste any time, you notice. Picks up that ball, stares at her spot, and away she goes. Well, Sam, I know I was being a little facetious at the opening about Brentwood, but you know it's true. Every time we come here, it snows or we have a monsoon. Oh, it's something, I tell you. Do you think Bob's got it in for us? I don't know. I hope not. That looks good. That looks good when I left her hand. Well, you know what they say, don't you? When the snow falls, the pins fall. Well, we should have a lot of them falling here today. I hope. Here he is. Bob opened with a big strike, but then blew the seven pin in the second frame, and he's open. Plays a little nosy with that one, has the 310. Well, Sam, here we are, 18 years of bringing you King of Bowling and uh, finished five weeks of King and Queen best ball. Time flies, doesn't it? Surely does. This is another uh, BPA promotion, Jack. Let's see if Bob can set this baby up. Well, go outside, make it the hard way. Oh, I knew he played it that way. You could tell. <laughs> you know, if we had a mic down here right now, Bob would say, I didn't play it that way. There's a couple ways to play it. Yeah, if you miss inside, go outside, like Bob just did. Bob Lab. He says he relies on 25% skill and 75% luck, and there was another good ball. He seems to roll the ball pretty good. Being his first time, he looks pretty good. He's from up in your neck of the woods, Hamilton. Hamilton, Fairfield area, yeah. <coughs> well, he had trouble with the seven. Let's see what Bob can do with the 10. This is that tricky cross lane shot. No problem there. You know, last night, Jack, out at the Princeton Bowling City Tournament, Denny Weil rolled 299. And one of our performers on the television show here all the time, Timmy Hale, shooted 300 in Middletown the other right? night, too, yeah? Oh, yeah? We'll be seeing Timmy again this year. Vi is still fast getting to that line. She can't wait to get up there. Yeah, that's uh, that's not the right uh, solution, I don't think. The way the conditions are, the hard finish, you got to make that ball roll more. She doesn't waste time at all. She's ready to go. And there comes Saul Sanker. Who said he wouldn't be here today, Sam? I did. Yeah, he just celebrated his 81st birthday, Jack. And it's, this is his 50th season in the bowling business. How about that? 50th year in the 50th bowling year. business. Saul Sanker, who is the owner here of Brentwood Bowl. Bob Levy and Carl Schwartz are... I guess co-managers, you'd say. There's a big ball. I think Vi wants to stay on 41. I believe it. The lanes here are 
sort of short inside, really. You know, it's a beautiful facade they have down there. With a, sort of the, uh, what would you call it, a solar system facade? I believe it. Boy, he's bowling in bad luck. That's a Brunswick setup, Jack. 48 lanes here at Winton and Compton Roads. Bratwood Bowl next week over in my neck of the woods, Delphair. Then we go to we go to Walt Center Lanes for the qualifier Walt, next there with that's still openings Saturday. here. Well, they're giving him a lot of practice at that ten pin today. Uh, Thirteen pin difference. Bob's had some bad luck. He's had two of them solidly in the pocket. Twice he's left solid 10 pins. There's the score, 79 a strike, 66 a spare. And we're halfway through match one. All righty, here it comes. And would you believe it? That called a little bit late. We still couldn't get the 10 out. I think you better go down and check that 10 pin, Sam. <laughs> well, for the third consecutive frame, Bob Lab is going to try that 10 pin. Look out, that one's taking legs on him. I would say right now, Vi is breathing comfortably. She gets an X here, she's going to be in pretty good shape. Vi McKinney trying to dispose of Bob Lab in match one. You know, we could have an all-gal finals here today. Very true, very true. Of course, Bob Robin Skinner is standing in the way of that right now. Well, tried to gang up on him. Yeah, it looked like they had a little inter interference on the play there. Next week, well, as we told you, the first two weeks, the women automatically qualify to the first week, as we have today. Next week, we'll have one. That's Nancy Amlung. But then the gals are on their own from there on in. We'll tell you about the bowlers next week after Vi delivers this spare ball. Scudder, remember him? 720. He was tops yesterday. Steve Bennell, who won along with Anita Vollmer the King and Queen Championship several weeks ago. Nancy Amlung for the gals and one of the four bowlers here today. Every time she's delivered over here, Sam, it's been a strike. She likes that 41. Bill Heflin. Well, he's a born loser already. So he he rolls right third there. yesterday with 702, but as the women bowl next week, Nancy M. Lung, Bill will be a, an alternate or a standby, as Mike Whalen is today, and Mike's sitting right behind me. There, he got, a, got that 10 pin out of there. But it's getting late, frame number eight. You, you remember who won it last year, don't you, Jack and Seymour's? Mike Upchurch, Bob Blandorf, oh, Jack the championship. Sure, yeah, Mike Upchurch, the, the Mike Upchurch, yeah. 18, 19 years of age. Two in a row, Bob. Yes, sir. Well, Bob says, he, I'm not calling it quits yet. I'm just, still got an open. Sam told me something here this morning or today that I didn't know, and I want to take this opportunity right after Vi delivers here. Another strike. One of our real buddies, Chuck Hacker. And Sam, I didn't know that he had uh, a slight heart attack or right. something. Getting along very good now. And Chuck, wherever you are watching here today, a speedy, speedy recovery. Let's see you back on these lanes. One of the nicest guys that ever graced the bowling lane or ever walked, period, is Chuck Hacker. There it goes, turkey time. She's tough. Yeah, she rolls a ball good here, Jack. Her There's speech, her Alice Gilkey down here, just smiling from ear to ear, one of her gals doing this. I asked her if she was a cheerleader. She said, yeah, I'm a cheerleader. 
the Chuck Hacker. Let us see Chuck back again. It's that solid 10 pin again. No, Chuck, uh, I didn't know about Chuck at all. I'm sorry to hear about that. Get along very good, though. The very first bowler we ever had on the program 18 years ago, Chuck and Gl Jack Gladhart. Gladhart, right. Okay. Well, all Bob can say is if I didn't have those 10 pins, I'd be leading. But that's the... What a 36 dif pin difference. That's the difference in bowling, though, Sam. And 10 pins will kill you. Ryan's been able to take them all, and four 10 pins have been left by Bob Lab, and he's got to go all the way to stay alive. Tenth frame, match one. That came high. I would say that's all she wrote for Bob. Yeah, that closed the store, I'm afraid. Well, he should have no problem with this old six pin. What did I say? Huh? That right side was his doomsday. Yeah, he had three one-pin misses. That's no good. So 171, is that what you have? True, Sam? very true. And here's Vi, already the winner in match one to go against Robin Skinner. And she has a sneaker down there. Yeah, she kind of side-wheeled that ball a little bit. A little speedy. a two, four, but that eight pin is behind that deuce. And she's gonna lead, yep. Nope, she didn't do it. But Vine has already done it here in match one. Two, four to 171. It'll be Vine against Robin Skinner right after this. Now, flavors on the way in a light beer, too. Beauty Delight, the full-flavored light brew from Beautiful. Beauty Delight has one-third less calories than our regular beer, so it's less filling. Come on, lighten up your life. Beauty Delight from Beauty, flavors on the way. Well, it's question and answer time. Who won the men's U.S. Open in 1978? Who won the men's U.S. Open 1978? Send those cards to BPA King of Bowling, 1821 Summit Road, room 216. And, of course, the winner, after the drawing next week, will receive a $50 gift certificate from Carl's Bowlers Paddock. And we'll repeat that question later on again. Who won the men's U.S. Open? Vi McKinney, who rolled a 204 in match one to defeat Bob Lab 171, starts off with a big one in match two, and her opponent's going to be Robin Skinner. Had a 204. Bob Lab, who had three open frames with misses, had a 171. And here's the men's top qualifier. And watch this fellow's approach. It's so short. We get a shot of his feet later on here. He is only, I would say, four feet from the foul line, if that. One, two, three, four. Ooh, and he hangs a 10 pin. That guy has rolled. Uh Six balls on 41. She's had five strikes. Five strikes and at 41. That's her lane. So Robin Skinner starting the way Bob Lab did with a 10 pin. Robin was top qualifier for the men. And he leaves the 10 pin and by golly, he's having the same problems that Bob Lab had. Robin, who had a 7.13 to lead the men in qualifying here at Brentwood. That's ironic, isn't it, how we got two men bowlers, both having problems with that right side, Sam? 
It's true. Notice he's well under that ball. Has perfect speed, Sam. Oh, beautiful speed. Got a good roll on the ball, too. Six pin. I think a little story on Bob was that he was bowling quite a well. He's averaging 191 in the league competition. The employee, uh, well, we can always say one thing. We need a little cash. We can go over and see Bob. He's a member of the employee of fifth, third back, and he has blown his second consecutive frame. The 10 pin, now the 6 pin, and, well, this is his first appearance on television, Sam. I guess you could say he's got the jitters. I think we had to call spare practice, I believe. We got the two veterans on TV, Pat Peterson and Vi McKinney. Look at that she disposed of one man. She's going to try to make it two. We may have an all-gal finals here today. This looks like a Mickey Peck uh, deal. Uh, isn't that the... Yeah, well, remember Mickey? The one six, seven straight weeks. Right. She was knocking off the men. Look at that. Three in a row. Look at that million-dollar smile. I think that right now, Robin would like to put his ball in his bag and start out the rear door here. Oh, he's down by plenty. He's almost 42 back and around in the third frame. And it's been the old spares. The spares have killed the men today. Much we can say, Rob. You better just start filling the frames right here. Hello. Yeah, he's got to get them started. <coughs> Rob says the reason he uses that short approach. Would you believe it, Sam? That's hard to believe now. The it ten sure pin, is. the six pin, and then the deuce. <laughs> There you see it, 9, 18, 27, three consecutive open frames. Bingo, bango, bongo for Vi McKinney. <laughs> What's the matter, Fred? You like that, huh? <laughs> the best way to cure this is get a strike, I think, for Rob. I think <laughs> That's the about the only salvation. He'll try the Brooklyn side. There we go, a little snug, but uh, he kind of... Robin sits down, Sam, and he says, thank goodness. That's the way to get on the board, get a strike. Well, it, it's not too easy sometimes out there. It looks easy, but... Especially when you see those little red eyes peering at you soon. That's uh, Vi's biggest fault, Jack. She gets a little quick on the tootsies, yeah. and then she side wheels the ball. It's not an easy combine to bring back here. One, two, four, eight. I saw up that hill. That's a walk. She gives you a thrill out there with us. I knew she you? had them when they went down, I'll tell you. <laughs> Uh, this is her pet lane right here. I think she's had six out of seven over here, Sam. Right. All right. All right. Make that seven out of eight. I think she kind of likes it 41. She stays right here. She'd be throwing strikes all day on lane 41. Well, we got Robin on the board. She's really got to go to work. She's going to get about six in a row. You can see Robin staring at that spot. Real short approach. Used a six step at one time and used all the approach. But he plays a ball high again. He said he was told to shorten his approach and to slow down his ball. He did. He has perfect speed, but I think, Sam, it's a case of Robin today, a little case of nerves. Well, that's true, too, but that's, you got to get a little break once in a while. There, he got it. Right now, he's down by plenty. 
Well, he's, Ty's been on quite a few times, and Pat's been on quite a few times, so it could be an all-girl all finals. Very, very easily. So the old ch format will change after this week. Our first queen of bowling. True. Not up the hill enough. Yep, from all indications, it's going to be Vi and Pat Peterson for the title of Queen of Bowling in our first week. Robin has three left down there, two, four, and eight. He's got to hit that deuce hard, but he did. But Sam, right now, he needs, needs help. He's roughly 49 back with only four frames to go. Solid in there. I leaves the 10. So well, she's getting some of that 10 pin itis. Well, we see our old reliables here today. Don Wickersham of the Burger Brewing Company. We mentioned Saul Sanker here at Brentwood. Lou Thaman, Freddie Younger, Fritz Kessler. Bonnie can breathe easy, I think, from here on in. Just fill frame, Sam. Yeah, she's a 52 up in the fifth. 116 to 64. Incidentally, Bob Robin Skinner's 713 he shot in qualifying was his highest three-game total ever. That's seven out of eight or eight out of nine over there, Sam. Eight out of nine. Mm. I think she's going to get a partner on that lane. That is her lane, 41, where she has struck every time but once. You can't go around too much, Jack. I think you're going to go too far around on 42. Well, there goes the kiss of death right there. That kind of solidified matter, Sam. Four, six, and seven can be made, but with the grace of God in a fast backfield, I think you can make this one. Three frames to go, and Sam, am I right? He has 90, and Vi has 146 without rolling a ball. This looked very good for Robin. Bob Lamb lost the first one, 171 to Vi McKinney's 204, and it was Rob Lab's open frames that killed him. There's the ball. Where is he been hiding that one? Super ball there. Beautiful delivery that time, and right in the pocket. Last ball found it's leashed a little wide. Not this time. There's those gals in the background. She's got a lot of moral support here today. Got a little better than Murray back there. Well, Vi, this is your lane. Another turkey. Boy, she loves that lane. Huh. Boy, she is bombing them out over there. She rolled a beautiful bowl, Jack. She gets that circle. So we have an all-gals final. Vi McKinney and Pat Peterson, one of the two to wear the crown of queen of bowling after our first week. Well, guess what? Four, six, seven, now it's the four, six. I feel for him right now, Sam. It's tough. He's had a lot of luck and it's all been bad. Mm. Mm. Well, what can you say? 
you, you feel sorry for a fellow like that, 118. Rye has 166 and working on three there. You just feel sorry for a fellow who's had all the problems that Robin Skinner has had, and he rolls a 713 in qualifying. will tell you when they make their first appearance on television, it's not the cameras, but down deep inside, it is. There's something about those little eyes that peer at you, and you know that you have thousands of people watching your every move. Of course, it never bothers an old pro like you, Slammer. Well, that's true, but uh, <laughs> I tell you, you got to get loose out there. Right? Sometimes it don't happen. You tense up. Yeah, you get a little tight. And that's it. One thirty-seven. A bad one for Robin Skinner. In fact, the match was over after the first three frames when he had three consecutive open frames and Fly well, went off with three in a row. Wow, where did that one come from? She can get 256 if she fills it out. She better save some of these for that match with Pat Peterson. Uh, I think it's going to be a battle, I'll tell you, between Pat and Vi. It's going to be really interesting. Four in a row. She's only had two frames where she hasn't struck. Look at this gal go. One more makes it 56. She's hot. You see why she's a champ, don't you? I can see why she's going to the U.S. Open. She's come a long way in the last two years. Is it six in a row for a 256? Sure is. Wow, we. 256, 137 for Robin Skinner on all gals final. It's a contest between the big national beers and burger beer. Now, because they're bigger, they can keep burger small. And because burger is small, it doesn't have the conglomerate clout to match the biggies. Catch 22. But patience, small batch brewing, along with the right hops, make burger the winner when it comes to taste. So pour me another fresh burger. The study of smaller brand beers in America is a shattering experience. While some have been knocked off, others have split. And a few small beers have been spared for the moment. Now, experts tell us the small brand won't survive. Big conglomerate breweries will pick it up. But Berger says bunk. When it comes to taste, Berger stands up to the biggies. So pour me another fresh burger. Five seconds. All right, question and answer time again. Who won the men's U.S. Open in 1978? Who won the men's U.S. Open bowling title in 1978? Send those cards to BPA King of Bowling, 1821 Summit Road, room 216, Cincinnati, Ohio, and the winner after the drawing next week to receive a $50 gift certificate from Carl's Bowlers Paddock. All right, Sam, we have said at the start we're going to have an all-gals final. By golly, we have just that. Here it is. Who do you think starting off? By on our favorite. Rolled a 204 to 171 to beat Bob Lamb. 256 to 137 over Robin Skinner. And she starts off on 41. And oh. hey, she moved that four pin there. No, no, no. The rack caught it, Sam. You better re-rack it. 
I'll have to be with now. The rack caught it, I believe. She had moved the four pin over in the neighborhood of the two, where the two would be. And uh, what happened was the rack caught the pin and knocked it over. So I guess we have nine in a spare. So we're going to have to wait until they put that two pin up, Sam. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, well, Sam's going down to, to tell him to re-rack or put the four pin up where actually she moved it over in the vicinity of the two pin. But the rack caught it, Sam. That legitimately was made. The rack caught it as it went down. There we go. We're going to have a sweep. There they go. And we're going to do it the second time. Now somebody's going to have to pick up the one pin and move the four pin over in the... Well, they actually didn't move it over where it belongs, Sam. It was over in the neighborhood of the two. Oh, it goes back on the original spot. Original spot, right. That didn't bother Mario. Any. But she hasn't got an easy one right here. We all know what Pat Peterson can do. She was on our champion... 1977, right? right in the best King ball. and Queen best ball. Runners up this past season with uh, Charlie, Lewis, Charlie Lewis, who is here today. And she starts off and almost had the 310. Pat, who was the top qualifier for the gals, as soon as I find it over here. 672. Ooh. Yeah, she bowled fantastic here, Jack. Had 182. The first one come on with two, two, two 240s. So we have an even match after one frame. <laughs> Brian McKinney, who's trying to make it a three-game sweep today, has her boss sitting over there from Montgomery Bowl, uh, Chuck Edmondson. That's right. You know, we had a, a girl champion here some time ago. The Shirley Schroeder went undefeated on this program, Jack, about 15 years ago. 15 years ago? Yeah, Not Shirley ago. Schroeder. Good call there. As we say, Vi is not going to have an easy time with Pat Peterson. This is going to be a contest, I'll tell you. Come on, babe. But for the first season, this reminds me of the about four years ago and Mickey Peck. Didn't she start her reign here? Right here, you know. Oh, there's a bad one. A bucket. Yeah, a little intermission. I think Vi's got a little quick. That's one of the few bad balls that Vi has delivered. The two, four, five, and eight better known in bowling parlance as the bucket. Not an easy spare. Boy, she doesn't waste any time. I'll give her credit. She just gets up there and lets go. That's true. Next week when we go to Del Fair, Don Scudder, Steve Bennell, Nancy Amlung, and either Vi McKinney or Pat Peterson. And qualifying next Saturday bowlers, and there are still openings at Walt Center Lanes in Newport, Kentucky. Well, she's got that four pin back again. Maya's been so hot here today, she just can't wait to get that ball and go. Yeah, she's a little, just a little turned at the foul line now, a little faster. She has three spares. In match number two, she started off with three strikes against Robin Skinner. But here's a gal who has been consistently averaging around that 200 mark, 195 to be exact in league competition. Pat Peterson. And the four seven. So next week we have Cannonball Nancy on the program. Nancy, boy, she fires that ball. Yes, yeah, she rifles it. She's our defending state singles champ. Right. Uh-oh, there's the opening. That may be the opening Vi needed. That's right, you can't... You just can't relax on them spares too much. You've got to be sure you cover them. 35 a spare and 48 and an open. The spare is what killed the men bowlers today, Bob Lab and Robin Skinner. That 
look good, but a little snug. Four pin again. Both these yeah. gals roll the fingertips, Jack. Roll they finger got a good roll. They both roll full rollers. It's an oddity. A lot of women say, how do they roll a full fingertip? That's right. That's right. not easy. Not no, easy. it isn't. The days of the old conventional grip, Sam, I guess, are gone, except for maybe beginners. Yeah, we'll the see the uh, attack that finishes hard, and you got to make the ball roll more, and that's why the fingertips for it, make it more roll on the ball. And she's got that bucket right back again. And last couple balls, she's taken off She's been fast. going to the races, hasn't she? Sure has. she got that quick six again. Identical spare as the last time over there. Two, four, five, and eight. And she's getting by with it. That isn't the way to play it. No, not too well. <laughs> I think her speed's been helping her on those. Yes. Now watch her. She picks up that ball, looks at her feet, stares at her spot, and she's ready to go right now. That's good, that's good. That was the ball of Ia McGinney. Well, we won't have to invoke the 15-second rule with these two, I'll tell you. There's no way. Ia McKinney, her husband sitting right smack dab in front of me here. Oh, he's just as proud as a peacock what his wife's been doing thus far. Yeah, there's only three pins three difference. Pins. You notice the just difference. Pat's a little inside with her ball. Vi's more of down and in. Right. Exactly right. That throws a pretty good bender for a woman bowler. I mean, with good speed. With the type of ball that Pat rolls, she can get inside a little more than Vi, and Vi rolls a little more speed, so she's more outside. Here she comes. It settles and not quite. <laughs> Just a contrast in style. Vi goes out. She tries to hit about that old second arrow. I would say Pat is playing about the 13th board, Sam, somewhere around in there. That's about the area. So she's keeping the pressure on Vi McKinney, who's up by three little pieces of lumber. And this is the lane right here. She's been getting twice the six count. She's a little bit faster than side wheeling. Not this time, but she got the seven. Yeah, don't forget bowlers next Saturday, Walt Center Lanes over in Newport. Openings available. They're waiting for you for qualifying. Next Sunday, the match will emanate from Dell Fair Lanes. Don Scudder, Steve Bennell, Nancy Amlung, and either Vi or Pat. Yeah, we'll be over to see Charlie Goldfuss next week. Yeah, we'll see old Chaz, and that's where we usually have the, the elevated. platform that's elevated for us so we can get a good bird's eye view of the lanes. Down here, we're sort of in a little pit today. Well, this is her lane. Lane 41, frame 7. Boy, she hammered that one. Could have been, Sam. Her speed's a little bit a little faster now. She speeded yeah. it up. She wanted that one. I think she's got the adrenaline flowing, I believe. Four pin, look out, and she blew it. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Pat Peterson gave her an opening earlier by blowing one in the third frame. And here in the seventh, when, boy, you don't want to blow any. The door's right open. Fly has left the door open, and this could be what Pat Peterson has been waiting for. Ten pin. She didn't take advantage of it so far. Well, this pair, she's about eight pins up. Mm -hmm. And this is no easy spare on that right side, either. No, they're not making them spares too well. 
By golly, would you believe it? Well, there's only three pins difference now. She had a chance to go ahead. Yeah, 119-116, by on top by three. Don't go away. This match is going to go right down to the final frame. There's the big ball. Yeah, she moved a little outside on that ball there, a little more. Ball well, walking good. Bly says, I gotta slow down. I gotta slow down. I'm going too fast to that line. She comes banging one home. Ninth frame coming up. Well, that's there's her ball right there. She wants one right now. That building frame, the I ninth think frame. Is, I think this is going to be the big ball right here, Jack. This could tell a lot. Ninth frame for both gals. She's got it in the area. Wow. You know, I thought Nancy Ann Lung fired that ball. This Vi doesn't throw a powder puff down there. She, uh, she hummed that pee down there pretty good. Well, she blew this she's seven a bigger before. gal than Nancy, I'll tell you. She puts a little zip on it. This is a seven pin that she doesn't like to shoot. Look out. Wow. Well, Pat can stay alive and maybe take the the edge. Let's put it that way with a strike. Well, this this is a must strike here. Calm, cool, and collected. She's see a veteran she, of TV bowling. We'll see if she can answer the call. She's got it out there. Here it comes. Ooh. Oh, that was good. It should have been. You mean it's an SOB ball? Okay, what is it? It should have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change that. SH should have been. <laughs> oh, all right, okay. That <laughs> uh, sounds a little better than you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we still have three pins, Sam. With it can be a contest. We said the final frame's going to decide it. The Which one is Lady Luck going to smile on? Well, <laughs> I won't mention it, I'll tell you. Big one in the tenth frame for Pat Peterson. There's a big one right there. I think if you ever needed a clutch strike, there was that, that was, was a big, it. Right that's there. a big ball. It could come down to the count, you know that? Mm, very easily. And Vine doesn't like that lane where she's going to wind up. No, nah, she's. Well, let's put it this way: it hasn't been treating her as well as 41. A double would have really hurt. One seven six with a conversion of the seven. Of course, you know Vi has to fill a frame here. Uh, you mean not only fill it, but get some good counts. Right. She better not get any quick sixes, huh? No, not now. All right, 176, and here it comes. It's right down to the count. Vi's going to see what she does now. She's going to change her format. It's been pick up the ball, look and go. I don't think she'll be wide with this ball, Jack, I don't think. Nope. Uh-huh. Oh, here we go again. Well, uh, <laughs> it's getting interesting now. It'll be very interesting now. Went down to the pin. It's the count that counts right now. Oh, this is a tough, I'd hate to be shooting this spare. Oh. Now, Sam, she needs nine to tie and nine ten to, to win. Nine to tie and ten to win, and eight to lose. Now, isn't that something? Eight to lose, nine to tie, ten to win. You talk about pressure. This is it right now. This is it. Tie ball. Right. 
<laughs> well, you were telling us about all the time we were going to have today, Sam. <laughs> a tie ball game. Two frames. Now, what are we going to do, Sam? Two frames. Two ninth frames. And tenth. Ninth and tenth all over Two again. Two frames. Now, that's the difference in king and queen. We have two frames in right. king of bowling. King and queen, we had one, right? <laughs> two frames. Two frames to go. How about that? They just split the 186. 176 to 176. She needed eight to lose, nine to tie, ten to win. Well, Samer, we had a lot of time at the end of the program we today. Don't know. We were talking about that earlier. We had about all oh, five or six minutes to go, but that's going to be eaten up right now. <laughs> And Vi's going to go. This is the ninth frame. This carry over is what it'll be. Vi's going to lead off on Sam. Sam, I have run out of room on my sheet. You're going to have to mark it from here on in. <laughs> we'll see Vi will bowl one frame and Pat will roll two. Right. Vi starts on 41. Oh, what a biggie there. What a biggie. So her ninth frame, she got a big one. Now Pat Peterson will come up and roll her ninth and tenth. That was a big strike, son. Yeah, that makes it tough. One of those nigh onto impossible splits. It looks easy with the 310, but she has that nine pin behind the three. Yeah, this, this is a, a tough one. This is a tough spare. It's, it's you go in between, though. Sam. You, yeah, you, you don't make it. You leave the nine. You she have to hit a part. Outside. That's about the way to go. Nah. Maybe. See what happens? You go in between. You leave the nine every time. You have to hit the three pin hard. Have the ball carry them off and take the ten. She's still got a chance yet, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still got a chance. That's not over yet. This is the 10th frame. Uh, she wound get, up deadlocked at 176. She gets three strikes. She gets 39. There's a big one right there. One more. That's her first one of the 10th. So on our very first week of King of Bowling, you're given a treat. Sudden death between two women. <laughs> By McKinney, the guy you're looking at right now, Pat Peterson. Well, that's uh, wide open, 4-7. Well, she can get 29 with a spare, so... <laughs> to make Vi get a mark. All Vi has to do is strike and practically solidify matters. So one of these two with Nancy Emlung, Don Scudder, and Steve Bennell at Del Fair next Sunday. 29 it is in her two frames. Now Vi can just about put it away with a strike right here. She's got to get a fill. Needs to fill the same thing that faced her back in the... Uh, She's going to have a little trouble this lane, but... Let's see what happens. Well, there we go again, Sam. She needs, needs a spare. Needs that seven pin. If she should miss it, she'll lose by one pin. Boy, this is a tough one to shoot. Yeah, this is a... She has a 400 or 200 with this one either. She's been flirting with it today. That's it. She's got it. <laughs> this is what we had before, Sam. That's true. That was a $200 ball there for that seven pin. <laughs> Wambo. That's all right. All right. 38 to 29. There she is, our winner. Vi McKinney over Pat Peterson in sudden death. We'll have the presentation right after this. The study of smaller brand beers in America is a shattering experience. While some have been knocked off, others have split. And a few small beers have been spared for the moment. Now experts tell us the small brand won't survive.
big conglomerate breweries will pick it up. But Berger says bunk. When it comes to taste, Berger stands up to the biggies. So pour me another fresh burger. Well, it was several years ago that Mickey Peck started her reign right here at Brentwood Bowl, becoming our queen for four or five consecutive weeks. Today, what do we have? Vi McKinney wins all three, then goes into sudden death with Pat Peterson, and we have our first queen of TV bowling, Vi McKinney, ladies and gentlemen. And now, gracing our lanes for the first time ever, I think, on television, our very genial host and the owner here at Brentwood, Mr. Saul Sanker, who just recently celebrated his 81st birthday. And if I look like you, if I live to be 81, you boy, you look great, Saul, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. Now I'll just hold this for you. All right, fine. Bye, since you're the top man or top girl of the group today, I'll be glad to present you with the $400. Thank you. And, uh, Pat, Pat Come on over here, Pat. Pat, looks like you're next with a $200. Thank you very much. I don't spend it all one time. Yeah. <laughs> and Robin, Robin Skinner, $100. Thank you. Hope it'll be more the next time. And Bob, Bob Lamb, <laughs> glad to see you get it. And, uh, Jack, that comment about my, what did you say, the 80th birthday? 81st. 81st. Mm -hmm. Well, I will want to say this. If I'm around on September the 1st and I'm still breathing, I will be ha having 50 years in the bowling business. Wonderful. And it's, and it's been very exciting. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, I understand you're bowling a uh, couple of nights a week. I used to. Shadow County doesn't let me bowl anymore. Well, how about you and I having a match game? Well, well by the way, what did you average when you did bowl? About 195. Okay. I was going to say something, but I better not. <laughs> Thank you ever how so much. How about you and I uh, having a match game uh, about September the 1st when I'm... Uh, Your 50th year. 50th year in the business. I'll do that. Probably have a match game for a little side bet. Okay. About uh, 50, maybe $100. All righty. I'll put the $100 up. Wow. And, uh, we'll put mine up while you're at it. I'll put yours up, too. We're getting a wind-up, so oh, right. thank Very you good. ever so much. Don't forget, next week we'll be at Del Fair. You've been a wonderful audience. Congratulations, Vi. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Jack. Good afternoon from Brentwood Ball. <laughs> PA King of Bowling has been brought to you by the Burger Beer Division of the Hudipo Brewing Company. Be sure to join us next Sunday when more of the area's top bowlers will compete for cash prizes on BPA King of Bowling. Today's recorded program was produced and directed by Tom Tenenfeld.